Hello world! Welcome in this video where we're going into advanced mapping. We're going to combine a linear mapping with a normal line mapping. Of course we use DroneLink. The linear mapping we will do ourselves, but the line mapping is just the standard line mapping from DroneLink. So we're combining two mappings. Because DroneLink doesn't have linear mapping, we will go do the mapping completely manual. Everything. But we do it step by step and it's actually not so hard. We will start our mapping as normal with a new plan. We do it with a path, so we will have to set the waypoints step by step. Like with every other mission, we first have to set our takeoff point. The second point is of course the start point of the path. This is the beginning of our mapping. Set the correct altitude and very important put the curve to linear, straight lines with a very small radius. For a correct mapping it is very important to have one standard altitude where we do all our imagery. In this video it is set 40 meters from the highest point which is of course the top of the bridge. Now set your waypoints according the path you want to follow. The width of your path is depending on your height, your camera and all settings. You just need to play with it until you have the correct settings. I just take a maximum of 5 meters between a path like this with an altitude of 40 meters. And of course, don't forget to save your versions on a regular basis. And it's time for the first preview. Of course you can change any of the waypoints and positions as you want or please. Same goes for the radius. When you're happy with the mission, it's time to set up the details for the camera and start adding commands. The setup of the camera is fairly standard, with these exceptions that it has to be a GPEG, then for mapping the best ratio is 4x3, and of course you have to set up the interval, which is usually 2 
or three seconds, but that is depending on the elevation and the speed of your drone. When you're mapping in a situation where there is sun and clouds, it's very good to set the EV standard to a certain level, like minus 0.3 or minus 0.7. This means that all the lighting on your images will be the same. It's good to check again. I have a tilt of minus 75 degrees. This is not necessary if you don't want to make a 3D mapping. Then you can have just straight down. And a linear mapping is only 2D. In the approach you can set an achieve component, so this can be set like start capture. So basically our linear mapping is now finished for the first leg, so let's do a preview. The red arrow indicates all the pictures with an interval of 3 seconds. One of the problems you might have in mapping is that your image is not nice and flat. The reason usually is that it contains images that are not linear. To prevent that, we will do just before the corners a marker where we set stop capturing. We take the curve and when we are back at the original path, we continue capturing. So that means we will have only linear images. The red arrow indicates the position where the camera stops capturing. We will add a normal mapping or a line mapping just for the 3D effect of the bridge. To have correct scale, please make sure you use the same parameters as for the linear mapping. A little offset grid together with the tilt which is not 90 degrees will give a little better 3D effect. Adjusting all the correct parameters, and then we should be ready. This mission looks fine and I think we're ready to fly. As always over urban areas, we first check if everything is safe to fly.
Okay, all is clear, so let's do some mapping. After I've copied all the files to the computer, we first need to start Docker, and then we can start Web ODM and start processing all the images. As soon as Web ODM is running, we start a new project, give it a name, and start importing the images for the project. Select all the images. Rendering the images can take up to 4-5 hours, so I will put a link in the description and continue to the next phase. When completed, download the textured model and you can use the OBG files. Click on one of the OBG files and MeshLab will open and display the image. It might take a while because all the graphics needs to be loaded as well. The link from this image on my website will be in the description.